Hello, uh, thank you for watching this talk. I'm David Wong at Colorado State University, and this work was in collaboration with Professor Bao Huili's group at Nankai University in China, where a PhD student, Yuan Feng, and a postdoc, Jia Ping Wu, did the actual work. As we all know, due to its both fundamental and practical importance, block of polymer self-assembly has been studied by many experimental, simulation, and theoretical groups for more than half a century by now. In particular, here, we compare the phase diagrams of the simplest block of polymer system, linear di-block of polymer melts, obtained from experiments and self-consistent field theory. The latter is considered as the most successful theory for block of polymer self-assembly. We see that while the theory gives good qualitative description of the experimental results due to its mean field approximation, as well as the differences between the experimental and the model systems, there are discrepancies between these two phase diagrams, particularly near the order disorder transition, where the fluctuations important in the experimental system are neglected by the theory. Such fluctuations can be and have been studied by molecular simulations. A problem exists, however, in all molecular simulations of spatially periodic structures, such as those formed by block of polymers. That is, the periodic boundary conditions of the simulation box may not match the bulk periodicity of the structure, which is usually not known before the simulation. And this mismatch will change the structure and even its stability obtained in the simulations. This problem is the easiest to understand and the most severe for cubic phases, where when the length of the cubic simulation box is not an integer multiple of the bulk period of the body centered cubic packing of spheres or that of the double gyroid phase, for example, it's unlikely to obtain them in the box. Such unusual finance effects were first reported by Mika and Binder in 1995 in their lattice Monte Carlo simulations of cylinders formed by diablocal polymers, where they showed that the cylinders can be strongly distorted, the finance scaling cannot be applied, and the order disorder transition cannot be accurately determined in their simulations. While this is a long-standing problem that exists in all molecular simulations of spatially periodic structures, it has rarely been studied in the literature. For one-dimensional metal structures, about 20 years ago, I proposed this simple formula shown in red for the lamella period L in the cuboid box of lengths Ld, with D being x, y, or z under the periodic boundary conditions. As shown here, with the lamella orientation represented by a unidirectional unit vector n perpendicular to the lamella interfaces, the periodic boundary conditions require that the number of lamella periods contained in the box along its d direction, denoted by n sub d here, be a non-negative integer. n sub d equal to zero simply means that the lamella interfaces are parallel to the d direction. Because of this, both the lamella orientation n and the corresponding period l in the periodic box are discretized. For a given box, one can therefore enumerate all possible l and n that can fit in the box, or one could design the box lengths such that as many different l's as possible can fit in the box and hope that some of them are close to the unknown box period l0. Skaver and Pozell, however, showed that the average value of L obtained over tens of simulation runs with the random initial configurations cannot serve as a reliable estimate of L0. For hexagonal packed cylinders, only one of us ever calculated their periodicity with specific orientations in the box. In this case, the cylinders are parallel to at least one box surface. And when looking along the cylinders, we assumed that they form an isocelous triangles with the intercylinder distance L2 being close to L1. Treating these layers of cylinders as lamellae, we then used the formula on the previous slide to calculate L1 and L2 in the cuboid box. In these two cases, reported in dissipated particle dynamics or DPD simulations, the cylinders are not parallel to any surface of a cubic box. And we see that the periodic boundary conditions 
can even make the three intercellular distances all different. So I will first present a general method for calculating the intercellular distances in a periodic cuboid box of length LD. This figure shows the hexagonal packing of cylinders in a plane perpendicular to them. The lines passing through the centers of these cylinders then form lavalier layers of three different orientations, represented by unidirectional unit vectors n sub i. As I just showed you, due to the periodic boundary conditions, the three intercellular distances l sub i may not equal to each other. The spacing of these lavalier layers d sub i are related to l sub i. In particular, the area of this triangle is given by this formula, with the last one being the Heron's formula. The hexagonal packing of cylinders also requires that this triangle be acute. The law of cosines therefore gives this result, where theta ij is the angle between the two sides of lengths li and lj. Due to the periodic boundary conditions, d sub i is given by this formula that I showed you before, where n sub i d is the number of lamella layers having orientations n sub i contained in the box along its d direction. Note that n sub i's are given by this, and their cross products must be parallel to each other, as specified by this. Finally, the law of sines for the triangle gives these equations. So, for a configuration of cylinders specified by n sub i d in a cuboid box of length l d, we can use this formula to calculate d sub i, then these to obtain the intercellular distances l sub i. This is confirmed with the three examples I showed on the previous slide. On the other hand, for a given box, we can enumerate all allowed n sub i d thus the cylinder orientations represented by n sub i and the corresponding l sub i that can fit in the box. They must satisfy all the constraints shown in blue. This further allows us to control the cylinder orientation and the intercellular distances by designing the box lengths. And finally, we can define a global order parameter for hexagonal packed cylinders formed by diablocal polymers which is needed for studying their phase transitions in simulations. This is my second topic. Here, for each allowed orientation of cylinders as specified by the three n sub i's in the box, we calculate this small psi, where the v vector q sub i is directly proportional to n sub i. Small n is the number of diablocal polymer chains contained in the box. And capital N is the chain length, N sub A is the number of A segments on each chain, and R sub KS is the spatial position of the S segment on the case chain. The order parameter capital psi is then defined as the maximum of small psi over all allowed orientations of cylinders, and its corresponding N sub I then gives the actual orientation of cylinders if they form. Here, we introduce the scaling factor psi star, such that psi is between 0 and 1. The psi star is numerically calculated for regular hexagonal packed cylinders formed by an incompressible diablocal polymer melt in the strong segregation limit under the mean field approximation and depends only on this ratio. Here, we plot capital psi for each collected configuration during our DPD simulations of diablocal polymer melts at the A block volume fraction of 0.3, and the various values of chi n characterizing the repulsion between the A and B blocks. We see that for large chi n, the cylinders form, while for small chi n, the psi decreases, indicating the formation of a different structure, in this case, a random network as an artifact caused by the periodic boundary conditions. This can also be seen by plotting the ensemble average of psi versus chi n. Next, let's focus on regular hexagonal packed cylinders desired in box simulations. 
and consider the problem of choosing the length of a periodic cuboid box such that these cylinders with given orientation n and the intercylinder distance l can fit in it. First, due to the periodic boundary conditions, we can always choose the origin of our simulation box to be at the center of a cylinder and to choose the box axis represented by unit vectors E sub D here to form a right-handed coordinate system. Second, we can rotate this coordinate system first around its x-axis by an angle negative alpha x, where E represents its rotated z-axis, then around its rotated y-axis E y prime by an angle E alpha y, such that its rotated z-axis E z prime is in the same direction as n. Here, a negative angle means counterclockwise when looking along the rotation axis. In particular, taking n to be this unidirectional unit vector without loss of generality, we can obtain analytical expressions of alpha x, alpha y, and the orthogonal rotation matrix R. Third, we switch to the x prime, y prime plane perpendicular to the cylinders, where they are projected as regular hexagonal packed circles. The three vertices of our box, represented by B sub D, each of which is also at the center of a cylinder due to the periodic boundary conditions, are projected as B prime D, as shown here. The 3D problem of regular hexagonal packed cylinders in the cuboid box is now reduced to a 2D problem of irregular hexagonal packed circles satisfying the periodic boundary conditions specified by B prime D. And this problem can be solved by a hardworking PhD student with a few pages of derivation. After solving this problem, we can then proceed to the final and the most important problem of finding the bulk period L0 in simulations. Only two methods have been proposed to address this problem. In the box length search algorithm, one varies the lengths of a cuboid box at a fixed volume to equalize the diagonal elements of the pressure tensor. This was proposed by Schwartz et al. in 2002 and is based on the idea that the mismatch between the periodic boundary conditions and L0 does not affect the pressure in the direction along which the structure exhibits no periodicity. It therefore works for the many with n perpendicular to at least one of the box axis D and for cylinders with n parallel to D, but does not work when they orient diagonally in the box. Also, it does not satisfy the Dietrich balance, and thus cannot be used for sampling. The second method is variable length Monte Carlo, where one varies the length of a cuboid box at a fixed volume according to the Metropolis acceptance criterion. This was used by one of us in 2013, who reported the first systematic set of L0 data for the many with n perpendicular to two box axis. A few more L0 data for the many and the cylinders were formed by the same model but at different primitive values were reported in another paper by one of us. Again, this method does not work for the many of cylinders oriented diagonally in the box. It satisfies the Dietrich balance, but is slower at finding L0 than the box length search algorithm according to Schwartz et al. Well, finally, for the many with n perpendicular to at most one box axis, Escaver and Purcell showed that L0 is obtained when all the off diagonal elements of the pressure tensor vanish in their DVD simulations. Since the pressure tensor can be readily calculated in molecular simulations in the continuum, we'd like to understand how its elements are affected by the orientation of the many of cylinders and by the mismatch between the periodic boundary conditions and their L0. For this, we perform DPD simulations of asymmetric dibloco polymer melts and calculate the symmetric and the dimensionless pressure tensor P with the variable root. 
we then calculate the sum of the squared differences in the three diagonal elements of the pressure tensor delta D and the sum of the squared of diagonal elements of the pressure tensor delta O. Clearly, when delta D is zero, all the diagonal elements are equal, and when delta O is zero, all the off diagonal elements vanish. Let's first look at the Lamelli and the regular hexagonal packed cylinders with a specific orientation denoted by a knot here. In this case, our deep D simulations show that L naught can be found using delta D as shown in black, which exhibits a minimum of zero as proposed by Schwartz et al. But not delta O, which is always zero, indicating no shear stress in the system. In other words, the pressure tensor P naught can be written like this with delta equal to one at L naught. Note that for Lamelli, the bulk pressure is given by the scalar P naught well, for cylinders, it is given by delta times P naught. For other orientations n, we can rotate the coordinate system as I explained before. And the pressure tensor P can be calculated from P naught using the orthogonal rotation matrix R. For diagonally oriented Lamelli and cylinders, the behaviors of delta D and delta O are then switched from the case of a naught, consistent with the findings of Skaver and Purcell. For other orientations, we can look at the ratio between delta D and delta O, which depends only on the rotation angles or equivalently the orientation N. And this figure shows that our simulation results, the symbols, are consistent with the R delta values given by this rotation analysis. Note that for orientations where R delta is larger than one, one should use equal diagonal elements instead of vanishing off diagonal elements of the pressure tensor to find L naught because delta D in this case is more sensitive to the deformation caused by the mismatch than delta O and vice versa. To summarize, for hexagonal packed cylinders in a periodic cuboid box, we have proposed a general method to calculate the intercylinder distances, and thus the orientation of cylinders. This allows us to enumerate all allowed orientations of cylinders in the box, and further to control the orientation by designing the box lengths. The latter is explicitly shown for regular hexagonal packed cylinders. We have also proposed a global order parameter for hexagonal packed cylinders formed by die block polymers, which can be used to quantify their formation in each connected configuration and to monitor their orientation, thus their periodicity during the simulation run. And finally, we have rationalized the use of pressure tensor to find the bulk period of Lamedi and the regular hexagonal packed cylinders in molecular simulations. These two papers contain all the details of our work. Thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have.